Fans of Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom are probably among the few people that are acquainted with or have heard of the Thuggies. Although this Hollywood depiction of the group is more than a tad bit inaccurate, it does shed light on this little known group. The first known reference to Thuggies as a brotherhood of sorts was in History of Feroz Shah, written by Ziauddin Barni in 1356. These people hold the position of being the world's first organized mafia in recorded history, and it is definitely no coincidence that the English word thug is derived from the thuggies and their activities. An organized gang of professional murderers and robbers, they traveled in groups across the Indian subcontinent, and according to Sir William Turner, they made it their business to frequent the great highways of India and become friendly with travelers, with a view to setting upon them and strangling them. The gang worked in an extremely systematic manner. The core idea was to join a group of travellers, stay with them long enough to ward off any weariness or doubts they might have. Then, having studied the geography of the land thoroughly, they would either attack the travellers at night or during a rest break, this ensured complete unpreparedness and the background noises could effectively subdue the cries of the victims. The victims were strangled by two to three men and either buried or thrown into a well. The thuggies even favoured specific spots, known as bellies, to carry out the killings. In case of larger groups, the thuggies would join them on their route in small groups at irregular intervals and show no signs of recognition of the other gang members present. This happened until the number of thuggies outnumbered the travellers, and then it was a strangle loot routine. Membership was largely hereditary, passed from father to son. Sometimes, the thuggies would take in the children of the travellers and train them in the ways of the thug life, which made them less conspicuous. What really interested us about the thuggies was the multiple religious backgrounds of the members there were Hindus, Muslims, and a few Sikhs. The thuggies worshipped Kali, and it is believed that the Muslim members were of an Islamic cult of assassins from Iran, who believed that the goddess Kali was a manifestation of Fatima. This theory is unproven, but there is solid evidence in the form of the arrest records of the British that Muslims were members of the thuggies too. Historian Mike Dash theorizes that the thuggies had no religious motivations, but merely resorted to thievery out of sheer poverty, which could also explain their multi-religious aspect. Holding a Guinness record of over 2 million kills in their time, the thuggy manus came to an end as a result of a crackdown by the British. In the 1830s Ferringhia, known as Seed Amir Ali, was captured by the civil servant William Henry Sleeman. He took Sleeman to one of the bellies and named the thuggies involved in the murders of the people whose bodies were hidden there. The Thuggy and Dakoti Department was established in 1835 by Sleeman, and the campaign was a success. Thousands were arrested, many became informants, the men were imprisoned and the women, along with children, were housed in convents. In late 19th century, a new theory, suggested by Martin Van Werkens in her book The Strangled Traveller, Colonial Imaginings and the Thugs of India, emerged that the Thuggies were a creation of the East India Company. She puts forth that there was no such group, it was a conceived notion by the British who feared the increasing power of rural dacords, and their unfamiliarity with the rural lifestyle posed a threat to their position of power, and hence, they issued an anti-Thuggy campaign to position their rules, laws and people into these areas. Now, we can neither prove nor disprove whether they were a colonial imaging, but the legacy, be it good or bad, left by the thuggies and their activities cannot be denied. With no complete records of exactly how many people were killed at the hands of this murderous cult of bandits, if the popular lore about the thuggies holds true, then they could just be the most dangerous group of people in history. According to the Guinness Book of Records, Behram the Indian Thug holds the record as the most prolific murderer. As the leader of a thuggy cult in Odd district, modern-day Uttar Pradesh in India, at his trial in it was established that, between 1790 and 1840, he had strangled at least 931 victims. After his arrest, 
In 1840, Behram and his family were executed in Jabalpur. Finally, after at least six centuries of wreaking havoc across India, the days of the thugs came to an end. Today, their reputation lives on in their name, a term which is now widely used throughout the world to refer to aggressive and violent young criminals. Please like, comment, and subscribe our channel for more interesting videos. Thank you.